I played through a randomized version of Fire Emblem Path of Radiance, where I completely randomized all of my unit's classes, stats, growth rates, as well as skills, while also randomizing enemy boss unit classes. Here's how it went. So we started out with Ike as a soldier. His base stats were terrible and his growths weren't anything to write home about. Luckily for me, he was able to get through the tutorial map with relative ease. We moved along into our first real chapter and got a look at three new characters. Boyd turned out to be a glass can Pegasus Rider. Oscar was a soldier like Ike and had growths like him as well. And Titania was our saving grace. She came in as a sage with overall decent growths. We got to the boss who randomized into an archer, giving us some easy XP to give to Ike. Continuing on, we got Reese added to our party. Since we start this map without Titania, we needed a unit who could hold his own, and lucky for us, Reese did just that. He was a fighter with our best growths to this point. We were able to hold on until Titania arrived, and with her damage and Reese's overall good stats, as well as Boyd's damage, we made it through the map with little struggle. Heading to chapter 3, we needed Gatri or Shinon to be good, since we would only have Ike and Titania there, and Ike being useless, Titania needed some help. Gatri came in as a wyvern rider with good stats and respectable growths. Shinon was a dragon, with some pretty decent growths, but his base stats were awful. Luckily, his HP stat was high so he would prove useful as a wall. Making our way through with Gotri dealing damage and Titania hiding behind Shinon as she rained down magic, we got onto the boat in time to save Marcia, who was randomized into a Pegasus Knight again. We defeated the boss, giving the XP to Gotri, and moved along. Still without Boyd and Oscar, our strategy stayed the same, keeping our weaker units behind Shinon's large HP bar while our Reese, Gotri, and Titania can clear the rest. And good for us, we got our first healer in Soren, coming in as a priest with high defensive growths. The heals definitely helped out. We cleared the map only leaving behind one archer. In chapter 5, we faced our first test. It was the defend map, and being that we only had two, maybe three reliable tanky units, but having four points to cover, we had to put Ike and Oscar to the test. I thought keeping Shinon and Reese at the front of the fortress while having Gotri hold the left, with Ike and Oscar switching off when they needed heals, would be our best bet. It worked out to start, but Reese just couldn't hold up with the onslaught. Luckily, I was able to move Gotri to the front once the left side enemies dwindled and was able to clear almost the full map before our time was up. As we hit chapter 6, the testing didn't stop. We were thrown into an escape map with some of our best tanky units unavailable to us, no Gotri or Shinon to help us. Once again, we had to rely on Reese and Titania to carry. And carry they did. We got to the boss who was a bird lagoos, and his stats for most of our units were quite too high to handle. Luckily, being an escape map, he would not move off of the escape tile, so we could use Titania's range to kill him with ease and escape. The next chapter, we got another new recruit in Mia, who was randomized into a wyvern rider, who came with some insane growths defensively and offensively, which proved useful in clearing the map. She could basically single-handedly clear the top section of the map with Ike following her, while everyone else cleared the bottom side. Gotri and Shinon arrived to help clear as well. The boss was a paladin that Titania could abuse with long range and end up giving Ike the kill. We then got to watch one of the best cutscenes in all of Fire Emblem. Pure cinema. What are you doing? But then but I threw it away. Oh. No. No. Father. After being traumatized by Grail's death, we had a terrible sleep and woke up to having to defend our castle, which once again brought up our issue with a very small number of defensive units to hold the line. 
The boss was a mage who had a bolting, which was frightening, because if I moved any of my units in range, he would instantly trigger and start running at me, mowing me down with boltings. And most of my units beside Titania and Reese had some terrible resistance. So I tried to keep everyone out of range while holding the line. I was able to keep this up until I needed to kill an archer with Boyd so I could move Titania to the front line to hold. I forgot about the bolting at this point and was just in range with Boyd. The boss moved and the bolting one shot Boyd. Our first death of the run. With the boss aggro, we had to be cautious, but we were able to hold on while also getting Ileana, who was a priest with some average growths. Moving along, the start of the next chapter, we got two new units in Mist and Rolf. Mist was a wyvern rider with overall amazing growths, and Rolf, who was a ranger, also with amazing growths, minus his HP, which was a 7% growth. And he only started with 17 HP, but I was hopeful. The problem is they both came at level 1 and very low bases, meaning they were essentially useless until we gave them some bonus XP. So, once again, we had to rely on Mia, Reese, and Titania. But a problem I hadn't realized to this point is having to use Titania so much in the last few maps, she had used all of her spells, and only had a dagger left. So she, like many of my other units, were almost useless. I sent Mia across the beach to try to reach the houses, while everyone else cleared to the castle. Everything was going smoothly. Mia had one more unit to clear, but had low HP. She got hit, leaving her with 3 HP. But of course, with my luck, it was a venom axe that hit me. And the poison got to Mia before she could reach a healer. The rest of the group continued forward, and we were able to arrive at the castle with minimal damage. It was at this point that we got access to the shop, which is great for Titania. But my dumbass didn't realize that I had access, so for the next few chapters, Titania stayed a useless mage with only a knife for protection. We got a second ranger unit in Volk whose growths were just as good as Rolf's, if not better. Things were starting to look up. We helped Nefni, Brom, and Kirin escape, with only Nefni proving usable, and we went on to escape. Before we got there, Reese by accidentally aggroed the boss, he was left with 3 HP. But we were able to heal him up and finish the map. Heading to chapter 11, I started out by giving Rolf and Mist some much needed bonus XP so that they could start to be useful. Paired with some of our newer units in Volk, Mordecai, and Leith, our team started to feel more well-rounded. I brought along Marcia and Kieran because I had space and thought, why not? Well, Kieran ended up getting flanked by a wyvern rider and dying almost immediately. So that's another death for the squad. We moved forward, recruiting Zhark on the team, who turned out to be a bow knight, which, considering we didn't have a bow up to this point, was quite helpful. In one of the houses in the top right of the map, we found a seraph's robe, which was instantly given to Rolf to help out with his 7% HP growth. We made it onto the boat, no problem. Once we got on the boat, we were given yet another new character in Soth. He came as another wyvern rider, with low base stats and low growths. So he instantly hit the bench. Now, with the boat on the move, we were swarmed with ravens and wyvern riders. But, with our new carries and Rolf and Mist, I was feeling confident. I sent Mist out to meet the ravens to the right of the boat, while everyone else focused on whoever came from the left. We held on until Jill came flying in on a Pegasus to help out. She had some average growths. We finished off the last ravens and sailed on. A little farther into our sailing adventure, we came upon an old friend of ours, Gotri. We decided to help his boat out, but not before a little trouble came. I started out the map with the goal to rush to Astrid to get Gotri on our team once again. Well, I did that, but quickly realized that our allied units were not strong enough to hold the line alone. They left a gap, leaving an enemy soldier to take the ship, costing us the map. On our second time around, I decided to focus on taking out as many of the enemies that I could reach, and blocking off the defend tile so that we wouldn't insta-lose the map. 
Gautry decided to try and avoid me as much as possible, but after chasing him down, we finally got him back on our team and easily beat the boss. Since I was so focused on getting Gautry back, I forgot that Soren wasn't that tanky, and Raven came over and one-shot him. We didn't have enough chest keys to open all of the chests, but since we beat the map with two turns remaining, we let the crows loot the chests for us so that we could beat them and take the loot. It was at this point in the run where we started to see the growths of Rolf come into effect. He had some insane defense and offense, and with the Seraph's robe to help his low HP growth, he was starting to be the carry of the run. Him and Reese were able to basically solo the map while everyone else went to say hi to Maklov, who was a bandit with some pretty good growths, but had some terrible bases to start. Moving along into the desert, we had to trudge through. With some good units starting to form, I started to feel confident in our team. We had some good defensive units paired with some good damage dealing units, so we were feeling good. We slowly made our way through the desert, picking up some hidden items along the way. I seemed to have felt a little too confident and set Ileana a little too far forward while looking for items. And a hawk was just in range to strike her down. Another one bites the dust. But we somehow dug up a whole person and a pegasus from under the sand in Stefan. He came pre-promoted as the Princess of Crimea with great stats, growths, and being able to wield staffs. So, losing Ileana wasn't as bad as I thought it was. We had to take down Miram, who was a sage that overall was slightly worse than Titania. We went into chapter 16 feeling good. Yeah, I had lost a few members along the way, but our other members were starting to shine. I was able to run through this map with Rolf, Mist, Reese, and Gautry at the front, as everyone tailed behind. We got to Devdan, who was a paladin, with meh bases and meh stats. Rolf went on to kill the boss, as Ike seized to finish the map. On to the longest chapter of them all, chapter 17, which is split into four separate parts. The first map was a route map. We were able to send Rolf, Reese, and Mist forward, while everyone else stayed back to defend Ike and stop any reinforcements. This gave Rolf enough XP to class change, giving him a nice boost in all stats. We routed the map with ease. The second map was an arrive map, and I had a fun idea where I would rescue Ike with Stefan, send Rolf straight into the arrive area to clear out any units, and just dive bomb Ike in there and finish the map nice and quick, which worked like a charm. Onto the third part, we had to defend for 10 turns. Since Ike was carrying Leanne, I couldn't just rescue him to keep him safe. So, in our trusty fashion, we sent Rolf down to deal with 90% of the enemies, while everyone else balled up and dealt with any incoming units. Mist was given just enough XP to class change as well. The final part of Chapter 17 was a map where we had to defeat the boss, who was Oliver. He randomized into a cat. I sent Mist and Gotchery forward, and Gotchery killing one unit gave him enough XP to class change. My team was starting to get some nice boosts in stats due to the class changes, so I was feeling good. I sent everyone else forward to wait. But of course, without thinking, I sent some of my unclass changed units a little too far forward. The main one being Volk. He was doubled by a cavalry to bring him to low HP, just enough for a wyvern to fly in and finish the job. Our team, enraged by the loss of Volk, they charged forth with Rolf leading the way. Learning from part two, I decided to go with the dive bomb strat again. This time, Stefan rescued Rolf and dropped him straight behind enemy lines. Rolf slaughtered all the units in his path, leaving only Oliver which was also taken care of in one turn. Once the map finished, Ike decided he wanted to grow a little bit too. But this forced class change wouldn't help him out much, as he still only had a total of 9 strength. 
At the start of chapter 18, we got three new units in Tanith, Janoff, and Olki, with only Janoff being useful. He had randomized into a raven, so just a different bird he felt like being. This map was the start of the full Rolf carry. We essentially only moved him forward while leaving everyone else behind. We got Sheenon back on the team so that he could immediately get benched. Rolf finished off the map with ease. Feeling a little bad about Rolf doing everything in the last map, I decided to give some of my units some much needed bonus XP. I class changed Zhark and Nefni while giving some more levels to Janoff as well. This map showcased that the rest of our units could hold their own. We moved forward enough to aggro Nesala, who came over to say hi. After checking it over, I decided it wasn't the best idea to try to kill him, so I sent Rolf over to the boss and quickly finished the map. It was at this point that I had finally realized that I had the shop this whole time, so I was able to give Titania some much needed tomes. This map was a breeze with our promoted units, nothing could stand in our way. We used Rolf and Reese to rush the boss and used everyone else to kill the wyverns coming in. We also got Khalil at the start, who came as a paladin, who was useful but not great. Chapter 21 was a long one. I decided once again send Rolf as far forward and as fast as he can to clear the way, while Mist, Gautry, and Reese clean up the scraps. Blowing past Cassidy and making our way to the throne room. We came face to face with Cheronio, who had randomized into a dragon. I moved a little closer than I expected, and Rolf was in range of Tronio. Tronio moved on to attack Rolf, who luckily didn't get a crit or aether, leaving Tronio with just 9 health. I had to unequip Rolf's weapon to make sure he wouldn't kill Tronio before we could recruit him. Doing so, I could move Ike close enough to recruit him. Moving on up to Ina, who was a halberdier, we whittled her down with Janoff and gave the killing blow to Turonio, and Ike seized the map. The next chapter, I just had to beat up some thugs who were using priests as a shield. So, I let Rolf solo most of it. Not much to say about that. Since the start of chapter 17, Rolf had gone all those maps dealing with 95% of enemies without taking a single point of damage. And in the back of my mind, I kind of hoped that would keep going. Going into the bridge map, I knew we would need to rely on Rolf to carry, since I didn't trust any of my other units to take a barrage after falling into a pitfall. I used my four main carries to push forward, Rolf and Reese on foot trudging through the pitfalls, as Gotri and Mist kept out a range of the ballistas, finishing off enemies that Rolf and Reese couldn't reach. I left behind all of my other units to deal with reinforcements and to recruit Har. He randomized into a wyvern. Yay, super cool and not totally the same as before. Anyways, with Har picked up, I could start moving the rest of my army forward, but the carries were basically already halfway across the map, so I decided to rescue Ike with Har and start carrying him to the finish line. Rolf decided he didn't want to dodge a cat claw, and the dream of a hitless Rolf run was crushed. Reinforcements arrived to help out, even though we didn't really need it. Reese and Rolf finished off Petrine, who also randomized back into a paladin, and Ike finished the map. We then had to move on to help out Joffrey, who was randomized into a lord unit. We got Bastion and Lucia in the map who came as a paladin and a wyvern. Both were useful, but closer to the bottom of our already useful units. I moved Mist with her high defense and her full guard to take on the boss and his units. She started to clear them out while everyone else moved forward. I used Gotri to help her out a little bit. 
Without thinking, I used Mist to chase after and kill the boss who had started to run away. With that one decision, enemy phase began. The ballista shot for Gotri and hit him dead on. They crit and one-shot Gotri, a unit who had been with us carrying from the start had left our presence. The crit. No. Right as I was saying, unless something happens to Gotri. Mist got revenge on the ballista and the rest of our units carried on and arrived at the castle. Moving on to chapter 25, the only worry was the falling boulders that the enemies were shoving upon us. Since there was no way to dodge them and they would hit for a flat 10 damage no matter what your defense was. Nothing else was really anything to be scared of. We slowly made our way up the hill defeating enemies as we went. The boulders were an issue leaving Reese at 9 HP at one point, but luckily no other unit was able to deal damage, so we didn't have to worry about him dying. We made it to the top and cleared the map. We finally got to use Alincia, who was randomized into a raven with some pretty good growths to boot. We breezed through this wide open map with ease. No troubles or hurt units to speak of. The first part of chapter 27 went without a hitch. We sent a team of Reese and some partners to the left, and Mist and some partners to the right, as Rolf, Ike, and Janoff went straight down the middle, clearing everything in their path. Getting to the boss who was randomized into a sage with meteors to spare, I had to be careful about who I brought into range, since some of my units <coughs> missed had some really low resistance. So to be safe, I just used Rolf to clear out the center and kill the boss. Leading us into the second part where we had to fight the Black Knight. Without either Mist or Ike being able to wield Ragnall and the Black Knight having plot armor against any weapon beyond Ragnall, I was forced to run away with Ike, leaving the Black Knight to get crushed by the falling castle. With Tybarn on our side, we ran through this map of Lagoos with ease, Tybarn clearing a good portion of the bottom side of the map, with Mist and Rolf leading the charge of my army to clear the top. The only thing to worry about was the dragons, who, if they would hit, dealt just under half of Rolf's HP, who at this point had maxed all of his stats beyond luck, magic, and health. Being cautious about the dragons, we made it to the boss and killed him off with Rolf, leading us to the final map. Before embarking on our final journey, I did some preparation. Maxing out Alincia's level, giving a bunch of XP to my lower level units such as Zhark and Nefni. I also used all of my leftover stat boosters accordingly, and gave any useful skills to my units. The time had come which I'll let speak for itself. I will say my recording did mess up on this map. Yeah, of course, with my luck, it had to be the final map that messed up. But I had to give you something, so here we go. Those are going to be a little scary. But I think for the most part, we can just send everyone forward. Uh, where is he? Here we go. We got the Ike Carrier. A little parcel package coming in. Okay, we'll send you around this way. I don't really want to aggro the dragon down. Little attack squad go out. Oh yeah, I gave Alincia a bunch of stat boosters and some boots. So she can she can fly now. What's her move? Yeah, 10 movement, 28 strength. She's kind of, kind of correct. Uh, we'll send you guys forward just in case Rolf needs help. And then Mist and Squad can go to the right. What's here? Just a... Ooh. You have bad resistance. Well, hopefully you live. Okay, we gave you a Lagoo Stone. So we can use that. And let's see what happens. 
Okay, so let me go over it with you guys exactly what happened. Okay, so as you saw, this mage just chunked mist. Here's mist. Look at her. It's so cute. Chunked mist to half HP roughly. So the rest of the enemy turn finished out. Not too much happening. I'll quickly move everyone. So the enemy phase ended, ending out with all of the left and right units moving down with Mist and Reese killing some of them. And down the middle, Rolf was able to kill the two knights. Bryce didn't end up attacking. He moved, but he did not attack. A dragon came from the left and Rolf got an Aether with a crit. So he was able to one shot the dragon. And then dragons from the middle and the right also started moving in. It was at this point in the map where we were able to choose between Gifka, Tybarn, and Nasala. And being that I had faith in our group 100%, no doubts, I decided not to call any of them. So to start my turn, I moved Reese up to take out this tiger, which he was able to accomplish very easily. I then moved Zhark to damage the other tiger with his Laguz bow. To finish off the tiger, I flew Stefan over, and he dealt the killing blow. Down in the middle, a problem was starting to form. I had two dragons coming in, and Bryce that I needed to take care of. But my only real unit down the middle was Rolf. I moved Rolf past Bryce, attacked him from a range with Ragnall, and hit a crit. Bryce down. I moved everyone else into this corner to say stay from the dragon. Use Rolf to go back and hit the other dragon that was coming in. Rolf got lucky and crit him, killing the dragon. With only one dragon left in the middle, and Ina with a Laguz Lance. She was able to double the dragon with her Laguz Lance and slay the dragon. The middle was now cleared. In the middle, I moved Rolf up to hold this choke point, with everyone else piling behind him to stay safe. I once again moved the left side and the right side forward. On the left, I used Reese with his Tomahawk to take out the mage. And I realized a lot of my units, such as Rolf and Mist, were sitting at under half HP. I used Stefan and his Ashira staff to heal everyone on my team. It was back to the enemy phase. The horde of archers in the middle had no other choice but to run straight into Rolf, and with Ragnall being able to do range damage, he slaughtered them all. The one paladin on the left side attacked Reese and was also killed. Well, the other one stayed away with range and was able to live for now. On the right side, this paladin moved towards Mist, thinking he had a chance, but no chance he had. But this remaining priest had something tricky up his sleeves. He used his sleep staff, and he was able to hit a sleep onto Mist. She was rendered useless for five turns. Sleep. I had now also aggroed all of the paladins on the upper stairs both on the right side and the left side. Back to player phase. On the left side, I used Alincia to take out the half health paladin, and I used Stefan to take out the other one. I moved Reese forward to hold the line. Now the right side was the tricky one. Luckily, with Drolf's boots and his insane movement speed, I was able to move him up and take out the sleep priest then used Titania's long-range magic to take out this other paladin, while moving everyone else forward to protect Mist. I kept Ike, Nefni, and Teronio in the middle. It was back to enemy phase. The enemies on the left had no choice but to kill themselves on Reese. The enemies on the right chose to avoid Rolf and attack Renolf and Janoff, killing all but one. Back to player phase. I continued Rolf on forward up the stairs, while using Renolf to take out this last remaining paladin. I then sent Reese forward, also up the stairs on the left side, knowing that none of my units could deal damage to Ashnard besides maybe Reese and Rolf. On enemy phase, there was only six paladins and Ashnard left. Ashnard not being able to move. The six paladins went to the left and the right killing themselves on Reese and Rolf, respectively. Only one man remained. I moved Reese forward to test out the damage on Ashnard. Zero. So I decided not to do that and leave him where he was. Now it was the moment of truth. Our carry throughout the entire game, Rolf, as the makeshift Ike that he was, could he deal damage to Ashnard? 
with the Sacred Blade Ragnall. I moved him forward in range. I checked the damage. I dealt 9 damage and didn't even double. Well, Ashnard was able to hit me for a whopping 26 damage. Luckily, he only had a 61% chance to hit me. Well, I had a 91% chance to hit him. I decided not to attack Ashnard in case he hit me twice in a row, killing me, leaving me unable to finish the map. It was now enemy phase. Time for a shitty rendition. So I waited by Ashnard and let him attack first. He attacked, completely missing Rolf. Rolf came at him, and he was able to hit a great aether. Dealing about half of Ashnard's health. Now that it was back to player phase, I thought I could just wait and see what happens next turn. But it'd be more cool if I just attacked him right now. So Rolf moved on forward and did what only Rolf could do. He hit two back-to-back -back Aethers. <laughs> to kill Ashnard. <laughs> and we were victorious. The King of Dane had been slain. Okay, there's Titania. Whoever fourth is. Stefan. Yeah, Stefan. Okay, 65. 92 for Mist. 127 for Reese. What's her all fat? 156. Look at our boy, the carry. And that is how I finished my first ever Fire Emblem Path of Radiance randomized. If you enjoyed the video and would like to see more, consider subscribing and leaving a like. If there's any game or randomizer you would like to see me play next, leave a comment below. Who knows, I might just eventually get to it. Well, anyways, that's about it. That's all. That's everything. Thanks for watching. Peace.